How's it going YouTube? We are back and as you can see from all the little scribbles on the whiteboard that the NHL tread deadline is upon us and um, there's still a lot more to cover so I'll probably end up making two or three more of these or sorry one or two more of these. Um, so this is going to be part one. Um, uh, it starts from top to bottom so most recent will be on the bottom and um, the oldest will be from the top. Uh, so Travis Zajrak and uh, Kyle Palmieri get traded uh, to the Islanders in exchange for AJ Greer, Mason Jobs, 2021 first, and a 2022 uh, conditional fourth round pick. And I believe um, if the Islanders go to the cup finals, that, that conditional fourth becomes a third. Um, so that's a pretty big um, trade to get started off with. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it a blockbuster deal, but it is, um, it is uh, noteworthy for sure. Um, the Islanders are a uh, tough team. A good defensive team got good goaltending and they need that um extra extra depth in the forward area Kyle Palmiari can put some uh, some pucks in the net for you and Zajac can uh, kill some penalties and uh, play a shutdown game so I think that um the Islanders definitely get what they're looking for here and um, the Devils definitely get some nice compensation in return I don't know too much about the the two uh, players up there I haven't really looked into them that much I don't know hockey prospects as well as I would know um baseball but I know that um that's a fairly uh, decent haul for those two guys that they sent to uh, New York. Um, and another pretty decently big deal here, the Blackhawks get their hands on sniper Brett Connolly, and uh, I believe Henrik Borgstrom would be more of a two-way forward, along with Riley Stillman and a 2021 20, seventh in exchange for Lucas Walmart and Lucas Carlson, uh, two guys that I also don't know too much about. But um, the Blackhawks struggled early on and have seemed to um, think that they have a chance to go ahead and make that playoffs. Um, they get some extra goal scoring and another guy that kills some penalties and uh, they uh, add some depth that they need and maybe have a chance to put a late push i believe there's like somewhere around 15 to like 16 games left so not a lot of time you need a lot of wins and uh, these blockbuster deadline deals are tend to be what put people over and um this may not be a trade but uh, the canucks extend winger tanner pearson pearson to a three-year 9.75 million dollar deal um, they seem to have liked the way he's performed as he has been a Canuck. So they decide that they're not going to move him. They're not going to let him walk. They're going to extend him for a three-year, $9.75 million deal. I know that um, Tanner Pearson is a good, tight-checking forward. Um, when he was a king, he killed a lot of penalties for us. He played really well, part of the cup teams. So they get the guy locked up. Their penalty kill will be aided by his presence for sure. And he adds some nice top nine goal scoring as well. Um, in a more minor deal, the Maple Leafs get Riley Nash in exchange for a 2022 conditional seventh. Um, if Riley Nash plays in more, I think it's 25% of the Maple Leafs playoff games, uh, the seventh becomes a sixth. And um, the Maple Leafs just love adding um, some depth to their forward core. They can never have enough forwards over there in Toronto. Uh, I believe he's more of a, a defensive forward, kill penalties. Um, it seems that a lot of teams are trying to boost their uh, penalty kills and bottom six defense uh, as a forward, as a forward core. So um, those guys can never be um, too invaluable, really. Uh, those those overtime winners that happen in the playoff games to win you a round or win you the cup tend to be guys on the bottom six. So you add uh, better players to the bottom six and you, you get that depth. Uh, it really bodes well for your playoff run. Uh, the Avalanche pick up Patrick Namath in exchange for a 2022 fourth. Um, Patrick Namath is a nice bottom six defender. Uh, he's not going to do too much offensively, I believe. I believe he's more of a defensive guy. Um, shutdown pairing kind of person. And uh, the Avalanche have one of the best defenses in the league, if not the best defense in the league. And it just got a little bit better. They don't give too much to get up, get him. Uh, I believe he's going to help that penalty kill. That's already stellar. So uh, the Avalanche are really trying to make a push for a cup this season. I think that they have a pretty good team to do it. Um, if I was going to make a bracket right now, I think the Avalanche would, would be uh, the winners in my uh, my bracket. Uh, the Lightning. Oh, sorry, I skipped a couple. Uh, the Panthers get Brandon Montour, and uh, they sent a 2021 third to Buffalo. Um, Brandon Montour has been a pretty decent defender over there in Buffalo, but the Buffalo team is a uh, dumpster fire right now. And uh, they are in danger of losing a stud Jack Eichel because he wants to win and they cannot seem to put a team on the ice that can win. It's just so crazy to me because on paper their team is just filthy. It just looks so good. 
It's just players aren't performing to the way that they were expected to perform. And, uh, and then they end up shipping out their, their decent players like Brandon Montour uh, to teams like, Pan uh, or like the Florida Panthers who are looking to make a push and get to that next level. Um, the loss of Aaron Ekblad probably played a big part of uh, this decision to make a trade for a defender um, as he is out for the season, I believe. So the Panthers needed help on the blue line after losing one of their better defenders. They get Brandon Montour to fill the gap. Uh, I don't know how much of a difference that will make because of the hole that, the size of the hole that's left by Ekblad for sure. Uh, the Avalanche also add a backup goaltender and uh, ship out Greg Patterson and a 2021 fifth in exchange to get Devin Dubnik. Um, this also uh, kind of coincides with their acquisition of Patrick Namath. Um, now they have a defender that's expendable. They send him back and they get a goaltender to um, a better goaltender to back up Philip Grubauer. Um, that team's scary, man. <laughs> that team, that Avalanche team, I wouldn't want to play them. No, sir. That team can score. They'll shut you down. They got probably one of the top three players in the league in Nathan McKinnon. <sighs> that team is something to be uh, something to behold. For sure. And then probably the biggest deal on this board is uh, the three-team deal by uh, Detroit, Tampa, and I believe Columbus. Um, the Lightning get a nice, probably a top four, four, or top four defender in their lineup in David Savard. Um, plays a nice two-way game, can get you some points. Can also um, shut it down for you if you need be. Um, they get a nice big piece to add to their blue line. And Tampa, I know we're like looking very, very... Um, underrated right now, being that they just won the Cup, no Kucherov this season, Stammer's always hurt, but they still win games. And Braden Point has, you know, taken off on all this offensive pressure on himself, and he's scoring goals. Um, they have the depth. It's just, it's just amazing. They, they lose two of their better players, and they have the best goaltender in the league and the best defender in the league. And you can still win games without the best forward in the league. Um, Braden Point's looking like he can do this all, in, all on his own if Stammer decides to hang him up. Or um, if he wants to be based on injury, he's still got plenty of time when it comes to age. It's just he's never really been able to stay healthy. And um, it sucks because I like Steven Stamkos and he's a beast. But in exchange for um, David Savard, uh, they sent a 2021 first and a 2022 third to Tampa while they also sent a 2021 fourth to the Red Wings and Detroit sent Brian Lashoff to the Blue Jackets. So the Blue Jackets get the most assets in this trade. Um, the Red Wings are just here so they won't get fined. Um, it's a joke, obviously. They're here because they, they get themselves a nice fourth from um, David Savard for a player that probably was not in their starting lineup. And um, it's a piece that really um, affects Lightning more than anything because they want Savard. They get Savard in a three-team deal. Uh, they don't have to give up as much. They give up two picks to Columbus. Um, the Red Wings said the other asset for them, and um, everybody looks like they get a pretty decent haul. Uh, I don't know too much about Lash Off, so maybe a fourth is um, comparable to his skills right now, but uh, the Blue Jackets get a first and a third out of Savard, and that's pretty nice if you ask me. Um, the Maple Leafs get some nice goaltender goal tender help and David Riddich in exchange for a 2022 third. Um, the Maple Leafs have Jack Campbell as their backup right now, I believe, and uh, Freddie Anderson as their starter. Um, Riddich will likely be there uh, either as depth or maybe to take that backup role on. I don't really know how um, uh, two goaltenders out in, ta or in Toronto are doing, but um, you can never really have too much depth, depth at that position right now because one goalie gets hurt and you're left with um, an AHL starter, and uh, that doesn't bode well for a nice playoff run. But that's going to do it for part one of the trade deadline for the NHL. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe, um, comment what you guys think about these deals and which one is the best one. And I'll see you guys next time.